Hello everybody, back with another video. It's solving logarithmic equations, the next lesson in our set of log uh, non-calculator unit. And so we're going to talk about how we can solve logarithmic equations. All right, so wiki wiki one, we're going to get started. Okay, so there are four steps in solving these log functions. Um, the first step is to condense the logs with those log properties that we learned yesterday. And if you don't remember, I have an entire video on the properties of logs that you can go watch. So using those properties of logs. Okay, second step. Um, there are two parts to this because it's possible to have two different uh, things happening. So the first part says if logs on both sides have the same base, then you can drop the logs. So if both sides of the equal sign have a log with the same base, you can drop the log. Uh, and then if there's a log on only one side, then you have to convert to exponential form. So if there's only a log on one side, convert to exponential form. After you do one of these two things, you get to solve. Yay, we love solving. Solve for x or variable. Solve for the variable. Uh, and then the last step is to check for extraneous solutions, which we know how to do that from the last unit. Um, essentially, that just means you plug x back in at the end and see if it actually works. And the reason we do that is because you cannot take the log of a negative number. You cannot take the log of a negative number. It doesn't work. Okay, so we have to check to make sure that when we plug it back in, the log is not negative. All right, <clears throat> first example, solve the following. Step one says to condense using our properties of logs. And I just spelled condense wrong. So condense. And the only reason we would need to condense is if we had um, more than one log on each side. But since we only have one log here and one log here, we do not have to condense. And so that's done. The second step is to either, um, if the logs on both sides have the same base, drop the log. If the logs have the same base, drop the log. Okay, and clearly that's what's happening here. We have log base 3, log base 3. So we can go ahead and do that part of step 2, drop the log. Okay, then I have 7x plus 3 equals 5x plus 9. Once I get to do that, done with step three, I can move on, uh, step two, move on to step three, and that is to solve. Solve for x. Now once we solve, the last step is to check for extraneous. Now I'm just going to tell you, you would want to check for most of them, but if you have, um, if you don't have any negatives, like in this entire thing, we have no negatives, no negatives here, no, get it, no negatives here, and our answer is not negative. So because there are absolutely no negatives, it's honestly not that necessary to check. It would only be necessary if you have a negative somewhere in your equation um, because it's less likely that it'll be negative if you don't have a negative. Now it's possible, so check anyway, but it's less likely, okay? Um, but so we would just plug this back in and see if we get a negative. If we get a negative, it's extraneous. If it's not negative, then we're good. <clears throat> Thank you.
Okay, next. Okay, so in this example, once again, we're going to start to see if we can condense using those logarithmic properties we learned. And so I'm going to look and see if there's anything that I can do to this side. And oh, wouldn't you guess it? 3 times log base 7 of 4. Well, if we're trying to condense, that means we can't have any numbers like this 3 out here um, before the log. And so the way that we get rid of numbers like that is we make them exponents. So condensing this would just consist of moving this 3 to the 4 to be the 4's exponent. So now we have log base 7 of 4 to the 3rd equals log base 7 4x minus 8. Okay, it looks like there's nothing else to condense um, because... Um, there's nothing else happening using those properties. So that means our second step would be uh, if the log has the same base, drop the log. And right here, log 7 and log 7, same base. So we can drop them. And we're left with 4 to the third equals 4x minus 8. And then we can simplify and solve. Four to the third is sixty-four, because four to the second is sixteen, and sixteen times four is sixty-four. Okay, so 4x divided by 4, 72 divided by 4, x equals 18. So once again, uh, since, we have, since we have a negative in this situation, unlike the previous problem, it would be a good idea to check for an extraneous solution. Okay, so that would mean that we take uh, only the parts where there's x, so that right there, this has x in it, so we would look at this part. So log, box mode, log base 7 of 4 times 18 minus 8. Well, 4 times 18 is 72. And 72 minus 8 is 64. And clearly, 64 is positive, which means that this works, and x equals 18 is an answer, is our answer. All right. Now, example three looks a bit longer. Um, so what we're going to do with example three is start it the same way. We try to condense first. which since there's more than one log on one side, we can absolutely condense. And the two logs are being added, which means when we condense, we multiply. Okay, so we're gonna condense by multiplying. Uh, so it's gonna be log base seven, x minus two times x plus three equals log base 7, 14. Now log base uh, 7 of x, that L looked weird. So log base 7 of x minus 2 times x plus 3. Well, if we have this kind of situation happening, we've got a FOIL. So x times x, x squared, x times 3, 
3x, negative 2 times x, negative 2x, and negative 2 times 3, negative 6. Well, now we've multiplied, so we can actually go ahead and, uh, since it's condensed, right, technically we could continue simplifying this, and we will in a second. But before we do that, I mean, we have just log of something and log of something on this side. Log of this, log of this. We can go ahead and get rid of our logs according to step two, which says same base. Drop the log. Okay, so we're going to drop these logs. <clears throat> then I get x squared plus x because 3x plus 2x, uh, 3x minus 2x is just x. Minus 6 equals 14. And I've said this before, but anytime you see an x squared, that means that we are going to have to factor. Um, and so to factor, we need to get everything to one side. And so I need to move this 14 over to the other side. So I'm going to move 14 over um, by subtracting it. And this is, ends up being x squared plus x minus 20 equals 0. And now I can factor. And I'm going to factor by using, since we can't use a calculator, I'm going to factor by using um, my target product, target sum. Alright, this is the easiest way to factor when you have a situation like this. Um, so right now we're solving. That's the step we're on. So my target product, remember, is the number that's before x squared times c. So the number before x squared is 1, c is negative 20, so our target product is negative 20. Target sum is just the number before x, so b. Well, b is just 1. So we need to figure out, um, target product is, we need to figure out uh, two numbers that multiply. So two numbers that multiply to equal 20, negative 20, but add to equal 1. So we're going to list out some numbers that uh, can multiply to equal negative 20. So that's 2 and 10, um, 4 and 5, and 1 and 20. And we need to think, what could I do to make these multiply to equal negative 20, but add to equal 1? Well, if they need to multiply to be negative 20, that means one of them has to be negative. Okay, well, if I do 4 and negative, uh, negative 4 and 5, negative 4 plus 5 equals 1. So that means that this factors into x minus 4 times x plus 5. And I know that it's going to be that because there's no number before x squared. x squared has a equals 0. So doing this target product target sum, especially if uh, a equals 0, uh, no, not 0, a equals 1, the number before x squared is 1, then you can just do this. You do target product target sum. Whatever two numbers you come up with, that's what goes in here. And then we can continue from there. All right, so this equals 0. So continuing to solve, we know that that means x minus 4 equals 0, and x minus 5 equals 0. So x equals, sorry, x plus 5. So x minus 4 equals 0, so x would equal 4, and x would equal negative 5. <coughs> All right, so we're almost done. We got those two answers. We are so close to being finished. We have to figure out if we have an extraneous solution. 
So we're going to take those two values and plug them back in and see if we get any negative logs. So we'll start with uh, x equals 4. So log 7, 4. I'm just plugging 4 in for wherever there was x. So there's an x there. I'm plugging 4 in. Minus 2 plus log 7 x plus 3 equals log oh we don't have to write that side anywhere that there's an x you have to write it but there's no x on this side so we don't have to write that part so um, log 7 4 minus 2 that's log 7 of 2 plus log 7 4 plus 3 is 7 well, both of those are positive, so this one's correct. This one works. So now we're going to try x equals negative 5. Log base 7, negative 5 minus 2, plus log base 7, negative 5, plus 3. Well, clearly already, negative 5 minus 2 is negative 7. And negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. Both of these logs are negative, which means eh, doesn't work. This is extraneous, and it's not going to work. So our only answer here is going to be x equals 4. Okay. Solve the following. First step is always condense. Okay, so it looks like to me the only thing that we can do here is take this number, take the one half, and move it to the front. So we're going to take this one half or move it to the back of, of 25. So anytime I have a number before a log, I can just change that into an exponent on this last number here. So then this side becomes um, log base 6 of 25 to the 1 half. Okay. And so now on this side, well, I mean, both of these are condensed, we have log 6, 25 to the 1 half, log 6, 29 minus 4x. Well, step 2 says, hey, if the logs are the same, drop the log. So we're going to drop this log here. And I'm left with 25 to the 1 half equals 29 minus 4x. Well, 25 to the 1 half, remember, anytime you have a half exponent, exponent of 1 half means square root. So this is really just the square root of 25. Okay, so exponent of 1 half Okay, exponent of 1 half means square root. So anytime I have an exponent of 1 half, it just means square root. So this is a square root of 25. Which the square root of 25 is just 5. And now we get to solve. Okay, so I got x equals 6, but we're not done yet. Remember, if we have any negatives, we need to check to see if it's extraneous. So the fourth step is extraneous solution. 
So I'm going to plug uh, 6n for x. So I meant to plug 6 in there. Okay, so 4 times 6 is 24. So this is really just 29 minus 24. Well, 29 minus 24 is simply log base 6 of 5. And that is even, I mean, uh, that is positive. So that means that this is an answer. x equals 6. So now we're getting into problems where um, we don't have the same log on each side. So we're going to talk about how we can solve that now. So before we've had the logs be the same on either side, but clearly there's no log on this side. So let's talk about what that looks like. Step one is always to condense. But if you check it out, there's nothing happening to this side, nothing happening to this side. So there's no condensing um, that we can do. So step two, if you have the same log base, you can drop them, but we don't, so we have to move to the other part of step two, which says to convert to exponential, convert to exponential, okay? So what this means is that just like what we've been doing before with the exponents, the snail method that I showed you with intro to logs, you start at this base and you come around town and you end here. Okay, so to convert it to exponential form, it becomes 2 to the fifth equals 5x plus 7. And now we can solve. So honestly, I think this one's maybe a little easier sometimes. But now we solve. So 2 to the 5th is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 32. So And I would say check here um, if, if there were any negatives in this problem. I would say check here. But since there are no negatives in this problem, we don't have to check for extraneous. Although that is step four. Okay. So here's my answer. Two more examples to go, y'all. We can do this. <clears throat> so then here's this one. Here's this one. We're going to solve the following. And again, this time, we are going to be, um, we're going to have to condense it. So we've had to do this before, but step one, condense. So if it's subtracting, subtraction means division with properties of logs. Okay, this is the quotient property. Subtraction means division. So that means that this turns into log base 2 of x plus 1 over x minus 4 equals 3. Okay, so done. We've condensed it. And now we check. We see, hey, is there a log on both sides with the same base? And clearly the answer to that is no, because there's not a log on this side. It's just 3. So that means we have to do the B part of step 2, which is exponential form. So we're converting to exponential form. So snail method makes this 2 to the third equals x minus 1 over x, or x plus 1, sorry, 
over x minus 4. And so 2 to the third, 2 to the third is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And now I want to try to continue solving. Now this is disgusting because it's a fraction, right? We hate that. That's the worst with all the letters on there. And so we need to figure out way, a way to get that uh, out of here. And the way to do that is to get rid of the bottom. X minus 4 is dividing, right? Well, the opposite of division is subtraction. Uh, nope, sorry. The opposite of division is multiplication. So if I want to get rid of the division, if I want to get rid of the fraction, I can multiply both sides by x minus 4. And so on this side, they cancel out. And on this side, we get to distribute win-win situation, right? And so this ends up being 8x minus 32 equals x plus 1. And then we get to solve for x, and that's it. Oh, we have to check for extraneous. But I would urge you to pause it at this point and try this on your own. I'll give you a second. I know probably what most of you did is just try to continue with this. So x equals 33 over 7. And yes, you can leave it like that. You don't have to do any more with that. Uh, and you would want to check, plug it in, and see if it works. Okay. Especially since there's a negative here. But 33 over 7, if that's greater than 4, then you should be fine. All right. Last one. I would love for you guys to try this on your own. Okay, so go ahead and pause this and try it on your own. All right, so if you didn't pause or if you're back to it, here's how we'll do it. Step one, condense. I need to get these two together because they're adding. Okay, so addition means multiplication. So really, I know that this is log x times x minus 3 equals 1, which is just x squared minus 3x. All right, well now I get to do my favorite thing. We all love it, we know it. We get to do the second step, which is if, uh, so the second step is if they have the same log base on either side, then I can drop the logs, but because they don't have a log on either side, then I need to exponent form. I need to convert it to exponent form. Well, remember, if there's no base, we know that the base is 10. That's the common log. We learned about that in the previous videos, uh, the intro to logs. The common log is 10. So then that means I start at 10, come around, end here. So 10 to the first equals x squared minus 3x. All right, well, clearly we have x squared. Anytime I have x squared, I know that it's going to be factoring. So the, last, uh, the third step, which is solving, I'm going to factor. So I get to factor x squared minus 3x. So to factor, i got to move everything to one side. So I get x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. 
and I'm going to go TP target product target sum. Well, my target product is going to be 1 times negative 10. My target sum is negative 3. Negative 3. So I need to figure out what multiplies to give me negative 10, but adds to give me negative 3. Well, negative 10 can be got by um, multiplying 5 times 2. And if I were to make one of these negative, like maybe negative 5, well, negative 5 times 2 equals negative 10. And negative 5 plus 2 equals negative 3. Hey, that worked, which means that this becomes x minus 5 times x plus 2 equals 0, which means that x minus 5 equals 0 and x, minus, x plus 2 equals 0. So x is 5 and x is negative 2. Now, since we have negatives here, so x, is, x equals positive 5 and x equals negative 2, and since we have negatives here in the problem, it's a good idea to check for extraneous. So we're going to check first x equals negative 2. So log of, x, of negative 2 minus 3 plus log of negative 2. Well, clearly both of these are negative, so hey, x minus 2 doesn't work. It's extraneous. Okay, so then x equals 5. Log of 5 minus 3 plus log of 5. Well, 5 minus 3 is positive 2, and 5 is positive, so that means that x equals 5 is an answer. Yay! All right, that's it, y'all. Those are all of our problems. That's how you solve logs. Um, thanks again for watching. Please remember to <laughs> subscribe, like this video, and uh, hit that notification bell for more videos from me. I post videos every week a lot of the time, like almost every day. So uh, be sure to subscribe so you can get those videos. I know we love watching our fun math tutorial videos. They're our favorites. So yes, you have an awesome day. Bye.